Okay, game on. Battlefield of Eternity. Our first map, the Donuts against Go Next. Yeah, play day number 12 continues. Another best of five Heroes of the Storm matches at hand. And let's see what the Donuts can do here. The Donuts are in a very similar situation as... Not quite the same, but it's a little bit similar to what we're seeing between 30k and the Hardos. I mean, 30k and the Hardos, they're still fighting for the number one spot. They're pretty much even on points, and it's always the battle of which team loses a map against someone first, which team struggles, which team has a problem at some point. And lying there in wait in position number three are the Donuts that are, of course, going to try to keep the distance to the number two teams as best they can and then at some point overtake them. And keep in mind, the Donuts were the first team that was able to take down the Hardos in the first part of the season. And they can really step it up. So they've proven that over and over again. If they pull it off once more, that would be kind of sexy. And it could happen. But anyways, now we got full-on bans on the supports. So Stukov, Uther, Lucio, and Chromie has been banned out. Yeah. Chromie, maybe not a support, but again, try to come up with a joke here. Can't get one. Yeah, I'm drawing a blank. Can always excuse myself being German. We are not supposed to be funny. And as I already said in the past, Angie already told me if I get any more funny, then she's not going to let me back in. So... Got to be a little bit careful there. Copenhagen and Lauber go in with their picks. So we now get the uh, quick picks into May and Sonia. Now we got Yuki on Hogger. So at least our side lane has already been determined. Battlefield of Eternity. Again, super brawly map. And there we go. Vala, my girl. Muradin at the front. And Vala is being played. If Blizzard really puts the next patch out the way that they intend, then I think we might see a lot more of Vala. Her level 20 talent is just fucking busted. I mean, honestly, with patches, it's always the same thing, right? On paper, a lot of the stuff just looks insane, and then you see it in the game, and all of a sudden it plays out that the hero might not be as good as you thought because the hit point pool has been reduced, that's too squishy, whatever it is. But when I look at the changes that they are currently proposing for Vala's level 20, I mean, she's going to have, at max hatred, a range increase that is just out of this world. I mean, Vala's going to sit at the core over there and shoot you on the other side of the map. That's what it feels like. So we'll, we'll see how some of that stuff points out. Anyways, I like that we now have her on Battlefield of Eternity again. She was always a hero that excels here with the arrow build. Monster Hunter is just too good against the Immortal. But can you keep her alive? That's the question. So for now, we got Medivh banned out and also Malfurion. So we have a full on four supports banned here right away. Oh. Alarak Rutsu with his Alarak pick again. Me likey. Good stuff. Okay. Uh, Ixia. What are we going to get from him? Give me that Ana. Nanu boosted Alarak engage. Let's go. Uh, Tyrande. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to run the picks. Then again, it's Ixia, so I'll give them the benefit of the doubt there, but yeah. I'm pretty sure that if we didn't see them go up against Go Next, who currently are in the seventh place in the standing, that that Tyrande pick wouldn't really come through. Throughout the season, I think we have seen Tyrande three, four times, and she got pretty much murdered every single time, but I would say that the gap between the two teams is so big that Ixia can... and Ixia is good enough that they can make that work. Now, in theory, Tehran is obviously kind of neat, but she doesn't have an escape. She's really squishy. A couple of other problems with that. So we'll see how effective she's going to be here. I mean, technically, she was one of the best supports on this map for a long time because of her trade against the objective. We got an Oriel on the other side, too, together with Zarya. Now, that's a four-man that's pretty beasty. It's old-school style that we're seeing here right now. Oriel, Zarya, plus Vala, and Jimmy for Exterminator. So even more damage against the Immortal from the Donuts. And they're clearly the favorite in the series. So Battlefield of Eternity, let's kick it off with game number one in the best of five, everybody. And let's see what the Donuts can pull off here with her Tirana composition. Whereas we have the Zarya Oriel support setup for Vala for the blue team. Let's head straight into game number one. Go next against the Donuts. Battlefield of Eternity is our first map. And of course, Vala straight away heading into the arrow build to get the extra damage against the Immortal with Monster Hunter. We got Zero playing the carry with Wit on Zarya. 
Muki on Hogger, Skynox on Oriel and Blade on Muradin. Main tank for him. Copenhagen on Sonia for the red team. We got Ixia on Taranda. Rutsu on Alarak. Skok is playing Jimmy and Lauba is on me. Now, the damage on the Immortal is, of course, going to come from Exterminator here, mainly from uh, Jimmy. Taranda can always chip in with her Hunter's Mark too, And she's always been one of the supports, as I mentioned earlier, that is in real trouble if you can bridge the gap to her and put her under pressure. That might be a job for Muradin, might be a job for Hogger. The two, especially after level 10, can try to pressure her a bit more but generally when you're playing to run the whole idea is that you're gaining some momentum in the game and that you're simply getting kills and there's a couple of variations of how you can play it on battlefield of eternity because again you can focus a bit more on the objective and try to burn it down with the hunter's mark but generally on uh, most maps what you're attempting to do is to roam the map with pretty much three heroes in the past, it was Muradin plus Taranda, so you go Stormbolt into Taranda stun, Hunter's Mark, and then a damage dealer tries to drop the target. And that MO is something that we're going to see a little bit here. You can break through a lot of good defense if you have a good Taranda player, but it's all about positioning for her, honestly, because the lack of an escape tool makes it oftentimes incredibly difficult to keep her alive. She doesn't have a lot of hit points or anything. But there is a gap between the two teams that's undeniable. So far, we have go next in the number seven position. And here's already the slow. Muradin, the suicide dwarf, jumps in deep and Wit gets away. Yeah, eats a little bit of damage, but whew, that was a bit of a wake up call here for Zarya. Yeah, someone's a little sleeping a little bit on the job. Get that coffee, baby, and wake up. Yeah, gotta go for that. All right, attacks are coming in at the bottom of the map now still. And obviously, if you have someone like Rutsus, Alarak, maybe even Mei, you can usually do a whole lot of work here after Rana follows up on that nicely. It's always just a question of pressure, right? I mean, again, one of the things, for example, why we're always talking about Kel'Thuzad being pretty meh is, amongst other things, that his hit point pool is just incredibly small and he dies very, very quickly. He just doesn't have any sustain and keeping him alive is a nightmare. If you're going up against an opponent and never attacks him, though, then, of course, he can dish out a lot of damage. And that's pretty much true for any hero in any setup. So uh, you can criticize a hero in a lineup as much as you can, but it always depends on how much does the opponent really exploit the weaknesses of a certain composition. And in uh, to which extent are they capable of doing it? Now the first kill is in against Zarya, so Wit might have survived a bit earlier, but now he's down, and that opens the camp at the bottom of the map. I kind of expected them to put someone to the top lane immediately to try at least to get the exchange on the camp, but that hasn't happened. Now, if someone on the donut side is now moving top side, ah, sorry, my bad. Sonya already took it. Sorry, got confused there for just a second. So, nicely done by Copenhagen. I was uh, just assuming, but that's two camps for the team. Well done. Couple of Stormbolt connects here for Muradin. Eight stacks so far. A little bit of pressure against Jimmy as well. And there's a level four talent. That means stacking for Vala is going to continue. Sledgehammer is in, by the way. So, yeah, now we got Sledgehammer. But we have not seen the level one taken. So, he's going for the Dwarf block here instead. Again, against the lineup that they're up against, kind of makes a bit of sense to play it safe, I suppose. But considering that they have a Zarya behind it, you could have maybe played around that a little bit more. If you don't go for the level 1 stack, then yes, your Sledgehammer is still allowing you to complete your baseline quests a bit faster. And the extra damage against the Immortal and Structures is kind of impactful still. But of course, it's always nice if you can combine that with the level 1 stacks. And then towards the late game, really dish out thousands of damage with a Stormbolt against the Immortal and Structures. And now the halftime show is ending in favor of the Donuts. Now they got Jimmy, they got Taranda. Doesn't come as a surprise, honestly. And let's see if they can burn that down quickly. Uh, Jimmy is already taking care of it, and he is going to be super quick on this. But there's the focus on Taranda. So Blade is already moving in for it. They're trying to get some extra damage in. Yeah, Ixia is on the run. Already dropping low, but there's no follow-up, honestly. Nice! Good telekinesis straight into the Immortal Stun. Really, really well played here by Rutsu. We're definitely going to take another look at that in a second, but that's exactly how you want to play this. Just go for the displacement, push them into the Immortal Stun, make that thing help you, and then get the kill. And there's a follow-up on Zarya, and they're trying to get more. Spin to win, a little bit of heal. Uh, can they get another kill? Yeah, that's looking good. Oriel is dead too. Four kills to zero. They're all a little bit low, but Vala is also very, very low here. Hoga is back, though. That's bad news. 
And he might still get a kill. Nah. Nah, no chance. In the meantime, the Immortal is topside. But yeah, check out the play of Alarak here. Have a look at that. How he is able to push Hogger straight into the Immortal stun. Perfect timing. Extremely well executed. And led, that led to the first kill in that setup. So nicely done. And now, of course, with the Immortal being alone on the top lane for quite some time together with Jimmy, they already did a lot of work here. They have one and a half levels ahead already. One and a half levels. Yeah, it's a good stuff. They can't quite get the fort, but it's more than enough. Now, Vala is trying to get some stacks together, but Skynox is getting attacked, and there is the stun! And a quick blow up against both of the supporters here. Zarya and Oriel are both dead. The fort is toast. The fort is definitely gonna go down here. And they are just going straight up for Vala, who dodged out on the stun, but even that didn't keep her alive. So we got seven kills to zero now. And the fort is destroyed to the donuts. They are crushing. At the bottom of the map is Copenhagen gonna get crushed here. The camp! Nobody wants the camp. They want Copenhagen, and they're getting him. They're getting him. Lauba! Lauba! Ah! <laughs> Stop! Cold! Skynox, the man with the whip. Nice. Lauba wanted to steal the camp away, be a bit cheeky here, but that didn't really work out because Oriel was paying attention. Now the top camp gets taken by the red team, but at least we have a first kill on the board for go next. Behemoth armor on level 4. A couple of sadism stacks coming together for Rutsu. He's sitting at 111. But nice follow-ups by Ixia here with Tyrande. But again, it's always a question on how much is that really worth it. Would they play that against, let's say, 30k or the Hardos? I doubt it a little bit, but maybe we're going to see it at some point. It would be kind of cool if they could make that uh, combo come back, but I doubt it because of the weaknesses that we explained a bit earlier and talked about it. There's Leap, there's the level 10. Sonia wants to look for it. Snowball set up. Unfortunately for Lauba, that didn't hit anybody, but they're already pushing them past the fort. With level 10 in their hands and no rogue abilities for go next, there's little that the blue team can do here. They can pretty much do nothing, honestly. They have to just simply accept that the fort is gonna get dropped and the halftime show, at least on the Immortal, is also gonna be taken by the Donuts. So this is a really, really bad situation for the blue team. I mean, they are suffering right now. They're trying to stop the bleeding somehow. The only thing that's gonna stop it for now is the level 10. Big leap, big leap, big follow-up, big double kill. Yeah, that's how you get two easy kills right here. Blade is trying to play against it, but there's no chance. Yeah, but look, that's a double kill. Look at that leap. Beautiful setup. The leap comes in, Alarak is ready for it right away. And they get the kills against Vala and against Zarya. Now at the top, they're still following up on Blade, and that's the end of Muradin. 11 kills to 1, and still no level 10 talent inside for go next. They need to bridge even more in order to get the talent. And yeah, they are getting crushed here. That's now also the halftime show. It gets locked in, but unless there is an incredible miracle happening, it's not gonna... it's not gonna happen. I just don't see it right now. The kills are still coming in. Hoga gets murdered. The little flea bag is already down. But damn. The donuts. They are going for the spicy place today. Uh, if the donuts continues like this, they're gonna turn into bagels. Uh, spicy place all over. But Blade? Yeah, misses the storm bolt. Unfortunate. Then again, Lauba. Yeah, Lauba's not hitting a lot of these either. <laughs> That's the second one. <laughs> so if you're ever ending up in a snowball fight, keep in mind, don't pick Lauba. Apparently he sucks at, uh, at all of that. It's a little bit surprising, honestly. I mean, the guy lives in Sweden. There's a lot of snow there. Down goes Alarak and Tyrande. Now, there's two kills. Finally, they were able to chase some, and that's two kills that they locked in. 100% shield on the Immortal is definitely going to ruin their day a little bit. But maybe they are able to get another kill. They're trying to already drop them. In comes Lulba. Copenhagen with a jump. And Vala is down. That's bad news for the defense. Uh, yeah. That's Skork. Stormbolt. And that's a kill. No way. No. What? <laughs> the whip. How do you get out of this one? The hell. Blade. 
No, he was so close to getting a kill here and then uh, the big escape of Jimmy. Yeah, Skog is still sitting tight and they're doing as much damage as they can. Now that Tyrande is back, there's that. Starting to get the wall destroyed. Shield on the other hand is also low. And Mei is down. That was a little bit of a Sudoku move by, by Mei here. I think he wanted to go for another snowball. No, not really. He just does it on cooldown. He just walked into them. Yeah, <laughs> Skok knows that he's dying too. Okay, they're yoloing a little bit hard here. By the way, here's the escape again. Check this one out. How they how they saved Jimmy. So yeah, that's the beginning. Everything is still fine. Then the turnaround. Skok realizes that he's in deep shit. And then Lauba, bam, with the easy slow. And Jimmy walks out. The fort is down. The keep on 50% HP. The bot lane in trouble, therefore. Level 13 talents are still in. We got by now the uh, talent advantage, but it's going to be negated in a few seconds. At the bottom of the map, there we go. Blade and Zero. I mean, rumor has it that at some point when they were heavily in the lead, Lauber let his uh, little sister take over the keyboard and the mouse. And that's what that bot lane was all about, where he just simply walked into it. <laughs> 23 stacks now on the Behemoth armor. Yeah. Got 110 sadism. Alrek dying earlier didn't def did definitely not help his cause. Still, he's sitting at 26,000 damage. It's about as much as Vala has currently. And as the hyper carry, there's that. Lauba still wants to hit another snowball. And yeah, Zarya, it was nice knowing you. Zarya is down. And there it is. It's one, it's two. The leap on top of it. That's a combo, baby. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. They only got one kill, but they got it. And now Oriel Skynox is just going straight for the whip. Nicely done. Without that, ah, that's a problem. No, that's a, yeah, that, he's dead. <laughs> and guess what? Yuki is also not going to survive. He's going to die eventually. They're going to get him. Oh, maybe not. Is he, oh, good stun. But yeah, that is the kill. Alrighty. And now Blade. Hop, little dwarf. Hop, hop, hop. Keep us down. And can he get him? Blade, Blade, baby. Rain of Vengeance, the stuns. <laughs> And Blade is dead. <laughs> okay, so there's that. By the way, since they might end here, we'll just show the combo real quickly. That's how they set it up. Check this combo out. So there it is. The snowball, it hits two. The leap straight on top of it. They only got one kill, but they got the kill. And now Vala is dead. Mei is dead. Yeah, we got 19 kills to 6. 25 in total. It's more than two kills per minute, by the way. Top side gets pressured. So they're going to try and save the keep for now. But I don't think they're going to go for the core just yet. The thing is the Immortal is also on the map and nobody cares. The Immortal is on the map and nobody really gives a shit. There's another leap and there's another kill. Hogger gets just farmed. Not as much as Vala though. Six deaths on Vala. Zarya has died five times. Yeah, and they're just going to go for more kills, more farm. Immortals? What are Immortals? What do you mean, objectives? <laughs> what are these objectives and where can I find them? Yeah, uh, Skynox is dead. I did, honestly, like at this point, they're just trying to farm them and nothing else. One hit after another. Yeah, Blade, he's trying his best. Hopping in again, gets a shield, and he's dead too. The thing is, the death timers are still fairly low because we're only 13 minutes in, and that's the biggest problem for the donuts. Now, they're losing Sonya. And Hoga, yeah, no, Alarak again. Rutsu, calm down. Another big kill. <laughs> what the fuck is this? <laughs> oh, Lauba sometimes just goes, Argh! I was like, dude, that didn't make any sense. And Lauba just replies, <laughs> and now they got the shield down. The core is starting to lose damage too. Yeah, they're turning this into a quick match pretty easily. 23 kills, 2-7. 30 kills in total. Are they finally, now that the talent advantage is about to be gone, making a play for the objective again? It seems like it. The entire time they had the level 16 lead over the opponent's team. Now that Gonex is locking in their own level 16 talent, they decide that they want to go for the objective after all. Did Ixir just get stunned by the Immortal? That just happened? Like, yeah, dude, you deserve that ping. They're going to call it out for sure. 42. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 Lava, and he's dead. So is Vala, though. 
Lava down, Vala down, another leap, another kill. That's Oriel and Zarya both eliminated. Blade is all alone with the flea bag. Yeah, he dies too. And now Mini Hogger is trying to escape here. Mini whirlwind and goodbye. And that's game. <laughs> 36 kills in total. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of the first map in this series. 93% on the core that they have to take down. And I don't think they're going to have a problem with this. Low death timers or not. There's just nothing that GoNext can do about this anymore. Easy win on map number one for the Donuts as they are trying to stay in touch with the number two and the number three in the standings here. Nicely done on Battlefield of Eternity, our first map in the best of five. Before we head into game number two, make sure that you subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet so you don't miss out on any future content here on Calder TV. Dragonshire, let's go guys, we got game number two coming up and yeah, let's not mince words here, map number one was a bit of farm city, the donuts, they did not waste any time whatsoever, they just dropped them super super quickly, now it was a bit of a crazy setup, I gotta say, there is obviously a gap between go next and the donuts, it's just what it is, the question here will be, can, the, can go next win a map? And for the Donuts, of course, it's highly important that they're winning this series with a 3-0. They are the number three in the standings. Gonex is number seven. If you're going up against someone where you are the clear favorite, you need to try to win this without losing a map. And honestly, losing even a single map would be a bit of a disaster for the Donuts, as they're still aiming to take the number two or number three slot at the end of the regular season before we're heading into the playoffs. Because keep in mind, the offline final has pretty much been confirmed on the 10th and 11th of July in Paris. More information can be found at mastersclash.eu. If you can't find the website, even though I just gave you the, uh, the URL, you can always just Google for Masters Clash in Europe and uh, you're gonna find it. There's some extra information about the event. There's of course a couple of COVID restrictions and stuff, but it's pretty much been confirmed. And ooh, ooh. Dragonshire and we got Samuro Abatha already. Okay, the cancer is real. Now Samuro Abatha, if you have a double Samuro hitting any kind of structure with a couple of uh, mirror images, oh boy, do they do those things go down quickly. So yeah. They're gonna have a little bit of fun here. The first thing that happens is they'd ban out the Vikings so that they can't be uh, counterplayed. But that is a nasty setup. This is actually something that we've seen on Sky Temple a couple of times, even in the times of HGC. There was roughly a week where because of Monkey, the player that wasn't even in HGC but only played in Storm League, uh, Ethero and a couple of others started to play Samoro and they played it a lot with Abathar on maps like Sky Temple to just cheese around an opponent in exactly that fashion. And it took around a week until all of the teams figured out through scrims and games how to properly react against Samoro, how to deal with him, and then he disappeared again. But during that week, we had a bit of a party there. So, yep. Hogga is in. We got Stukov together with the two. Dragonshire is, of course, another one where we have a lot of camps where Hogga can really excel. In total, there's three Bruiser camps and uh, two Siege Giants that he can take. And, well, what do you ban against the setup? Bright ring. Yeah, anything that is like globling around a bit can be nasty. And you always. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Valera Zeratul with Abatha. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Abatha, like, is anything in this comp not cancer with Abatha? Like, seriously. Abatha Valera, Abatha Samoro, Abatha Zaratul. If you're a backliner, you're just saying, like, screw me. Look how they react. They just pick melee. They just pick melee. They're like, we're not picking any squishies. Fuck that. A squishy against this? Not happening. Oh my god. <laughs> Player killer number one, baby. <laughs> uh... Can this work? I mean, I appreciate your opinion, but they are still the favorite. So let's check it out. Dragon Shy, everybody. Game number two. These guys are just fucking crazy. All right. Um, <laughs> that just happened. That's a draft. The disrespect is real. So 
<laughs> I just can't. On the left side, go next with Skynox on Stukov, Yuki on Hoga, Wit on May. We got Blade on Rexa and Zero on Dehaka. When they saw what's happening here, they just said, guys, let's go full melee. We have to survive through this garbage and then maybe we can do something. But let's not pick any squishies that can be farmed. We have player killer number one on the right side. Nova is in the house, played by Skog, heading things off with a long shot. Valera played by Copenhagen, Lauba and Samuro, Ixia played by Abatha going straight into the Invented Nest build, and Rutsu on Zeratul. They have to rename themselves into uh, the Kansas squad or something after this game. I mean, damn, son. What the hell? They're going full stealth on this one. Abatha, the bait! The bait! Look at it, look at it! <laughs> <laughs> the bait! Everybody is here and Abatha is just going in for the slap. <laughs> and the Haka is like, nope. I'm not falling for that shit. It's like, this is too good to be true. Look, look at this! <laughs> He's fully baiting him! <laughs> oh, this is... <laughs> and Zero is saying like, no, I'm not even gonna click close. <laughs> not even a little bit. Oh, 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 no, no. <laughs> the Haga wants the worm. Uh, it's like they're fishing. They put the worm at the front and they're just trying to go fish. No, no, no. Zero is just saying it, not on my watch, and therefore nobody's getting a kill. Yeah, here comes Valera, though. Valera, Zaratul, and they're just on the run here. God, what a setup. Now, they got some wave clear. Zaratul, Samuro, they can still deal with the lanes. We got Hoga trying to go for the camp. There is obviously a lot that Konex can do in order to ruin these plays. I mean, what do the Donuts want to do? The Donuts want to get kills. That's the first thing. They still have a couple of heroes that can be really nice in pushing structures. We talked about the Samuro setup, but that... <laughs> <laughs> Poor Nova gets eliminated right away. The drag is there. Nova is down. And, well, that's not really a good start for the donuts. First, the little trap didn't work out. Now Nova is dead. Look at that. He went for Animal Husbandry. <laughs> nice. Animal Husbandry is in. Blade is going for it. And we'll see if he can survive all of this or not. But, yep. Good stuff here. Okay, we're gonna keep an eye on Rexa a little bit later as we're gonna check all of this out. But Animal Husbandry has been uh, taken. So, Copenhagen down here. Oh. <laughs> that didn't last long. <laughs> yeah, that didn't work. So much for Animal Husbandry. Maybe it was like a really unhappy marriage. I don't know, but it seems like they just got divorced. That definitely didn't work out. So, yeah. It was too good, be, too good to be true, you know? So, already on the level 4, the relentless strikes are coming in. One with the wind, prolific dispersal. And that's a kill for a kill, at least. Uh, Rexa is back up at the top. And... <laughs> There's the attack for the Haka! But Copenhagen has to get out of this. So it seems to me that Gonex is just trying to get camps. So that's one of the first things. Get some camps, get the camps on the map, trying to push with it. And then play around that, get some pressure going on the lanes, and yeah, it just executed that way. And so far, honestly, it is working. Up at the top, Yuki! Time to say goodbye! Easy kill against Hogger, he just got pogged, but they're at the bot lane. Oh! <laughs> nice reaction time, Rutso! Yeah, that would have been a Misha kill. But they take the fort down at the bottom, so structurally they're already falling behind. And yep. I, I mean, I've been talking a lot earlier about how the Donuts really want to win this with the 3-0. And at this point, I think they just came in and gave me the middle finger and said, Dude, we don't give a shit. We are happy with the number 3 spot. We're going to take it in the playoffs, baby. So yep, they're just doing what they can here. In this case, Valera gets quickly stunned out. And they're trying to replay here towards the top. 
In the middle, there was also a little bit of a fight happening with Lauba on his Samuro. And I mean, Lauba played his Samuro already once. It wasn't really all that successful, but this is looking kind of interesting with the Abathur setup that they have here. So I'm really waiting for that late game stuff that can happen here. But then again, already, yeah, we got 8.5 versus 8 on the levels. A little bit of a lead, not by much. Yuki, look at this. He doesn't want to take it. He doesn't know where all the where all the heroes are. Misha, this path is blocked. Something's not right here. And they just go for another bear pelt. Yeah, they go for all that fur. So that allows Yuki to go down to the bottom of the map and retake the uh, the shrine. But it is crazy how careful they gotta be, right? The entire time, they don't know where anybody is. They're just waiting it out, and then Misha wants to go through a bush, and all of a sudden, yeah, well, that bush is occupied. Mm, okay, here we go. Misha, body blocked! And might still escape here. Oh, or well not. That's a good stun in uh, tower range, though. But yeah, Misha is down. The pew 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 of Nova is right there. Went into the anti armor shells on level 7. By now at the top, Abyssa is still trying to keep them alive a little bit longer. Level 10 is honestly going to be a game changer. Yeah. Level 10 is going to be a huge game changer here. But you can tell that every time these camps are up, they're trying to claim them. And the interesting part is that now Lauba, with the help of Abyssa, is trying to just steal them away before they can take all of them. There's a level 10 right now, at least on one side. They're trying to get the Dragonite together with it. And I don't see anybody stopping them here. Yeah, nope. Toxic Ness is a little bit too late to do anything. So the Dragonite gets taken. There's the level 10. At least they got the Siege Giants. But that also means that Samuro is now on the menu. Lauba is trying to escape. And don't tell me he gets away. Yet. Oh! <laughs> that didn't work with a Horde Pult. Lauba, the Juke Master 2000. But he gets shut down at the end of the day anyways. On the level 10, we now got the ultimate evolution. We got the Blade Storm, the Cloak of Shadows, and the Triple Tap. Yeah, they already turned the Dragonite away. So that one's down. The Roots is at the bottom of the map and has to be a bit careful now that Yuku is coming in. But he still has the wave clear, thanks to his cleave. Rutsu, and yeah, he gets out of harm's way. But they are still fighting an uphill battle here. Let's not forget that they're half a level behind. So it's not all that easy. Level 10 definitely changes things quite a bit. But here we go. We got currently go next with... <laughs> look at the hero damage. 4,600 for the Haka, top damage. 14,000 for Abatha. Yeah, they go for Blade! And the Divorce is final. Yeah, the, the Divorce is in again. Ixia loses the copy. Samuro is about to get out. Rutsu, yeah, they get another kill. That's Stukov eliminated. But Valera is also losing uh, the battle. Yeah, she is getting taken down too. Lauba, ah, still a bit of an assist with Abatha here as he gets another symbiote. But they got the damage. The thing is that really nobody on the side of the blue team can do a lot of damage. But that's not really the game plan here. First of all, they don't need to do a lot of damage since everybody is squishy on the other side. But second of all, they are trying to control the map and trying to control the lanes. And they've taken one four down, second one... Uh, the one in the middle has already been attacked a little bit. It has eaten some damage, so there's that. But here we go. Straight up the setup towards the top side with... This, the, the toxic Nest, if you go for a Toxic Nest build, it's just so incredibly annoying to deal with that. It's kind of bonkers. It's one of the most annoying setups that can possibly go up against because they're just going to be spawning everywhere. Down here, another setup. Blade is dead again. He should have never got married. Honestly. The animal husbandry, it just doesn't work. I mean, Rexa, I know, like, you have a romantic moment there. You two gaze on one of the dragon knights or something. Whatever, but yeah, it's not meant to be, dude. Misha has other interests, and no matter how often you try, it's just not a thing. So yeah, Animal Husbandry was definitely not the pick here. He doesn't have a whole lot of fun with that. That's like the third time that he now died. Skynox. Oh, nice. Nice. Good setup. That shove. No. Yeah, the fountain to save them all. But check it out. Did I catch that? Check the shove out here. He, he shoves it into the wall and that mini stun keeps him alive. Talking about keeping things alive. Abathur! Yes! He goes for the copy. 
Abathel is apparently like, trying to escape here, slugging it out, goes for the copy. They have to chase them back because once the copy is gone, he's going to spawn right here. But yep, that's the first kill. So they're able to take Hogger down. They're trying for more. And Ixir is going to respawn in just a second. It's time to slug it out. Yep, that wall is too late. I'm sorry, my friend. That wall is a little bit too late. Level 13 is now in. There's still the threat of another Dragonite. And Zero is trying to take it. Six kills to four. Level 14 to 14. Abatha has 26,000 damage. Top damage on the blue team is 10k. Everybody else is still in the single digits when it comes to that. And Abatha is taking the top lane now. The Slugger! Full access here. And they're trying to go for the Dragonite. And they also get the kill against Rexa again. Rexa, he needs a good, good lawyer. I think Misha is taking him for everything here. So, Wit. <laughs> Dude, you're going to be in so much trouble if you don't slide out quickly. Yeah, but there's a bit of an assist from Stukov too, so at least that helps. This, is, this game is just nuts. Seven kills to four. <laughs> this is just stupid. <laughs> okay. Nova against May. I think Overwatch wins this. Uh, maybe with the help. Oh, yeah, the rest of the team is coming into you. What do you mean you're attacking Blondie here? That's not how this works. Nice wall, by the way. Hits three. That's not bad. But, oh, they get the kill on Zaratul. And now the Haka comes in. Misses the isolation completely, on the other hand. Couldn't decide who to go for. And shoots it right into the middle. Yeah. Uh, Abatha is occupying them by La oh oh Lauba. <laughs> he tried to just simply channel it through. Nope, that didn't work. And there's another Dragonite now. Yeah, Yuki is taking it. Okay, Yuki takes it. Now we also have the top lane pressured, so there's a couple of remainders. Abathur with the Toxic Nest is able to eliminate that quickly. And they're not even bothering with the mid lane. They're not even going for the fort. Instead, they're just saying, guys, let's try to end this as quickly as we can. Let's move through the middle, uh, sorry, through the bottom and try to take that keep down. The more we get in terms of map control, the more catapult pressure we get against them, the better. Yeah, that's set up. Are they going to get the kill? I don't think so. No, no, no. Abathur was already helping. Yeah, but there is a talent advantage now. There's a talent advantage. There's a camp and the Dragonite at the bot lane. Plus also a catapult that moved in together with it. So that is definitely a wall destroyed and likely a keep. Maybe the donuts overreached a little bit here. Maybe they were trying to be too cute in this game. Yeah, there's a drag and Lauba. No, no, Ruzzo. Zeratul is down. All right. Zeratul is dead. Lauba is still alive. 33,000 damage for player killer number one, by the way. Doesn't change the fact that the keep is down. Bot lane is completely destroyed. And yeah, they can't quite end here. Seven kills to seven. I mean, the kills are dead even. But you look at the minimap and you know which team is currently running the show here. I mean, <laughs> the are putting up a show. That's true. But there's n it's not really as effective as they are hoping for. Okay, so well, as all of this continues, we got level 16 times on both sides. Abatha hasn't died yet on 16. We got Abby with a volatile uh, mutation. We also have on top of that the seal fade. We got the crippling shot in after the double tap here. The synergy with the void slash and the level 1 talent that Zeratul already picked earlier. So that's definitely chipping in some extra damage. But things are still a bit rough and they never really opened the map up enough for potential Samuro and Abatha plays to take down structures. So it's all about kills for them. And a bit of a shot at the Skynotes too. He shut down a lot of these plays with his lurking arm, but uh-oh. There's another setup. Valera is down and so is Samuro. The blue team is really getting into a bit of a rhythm here, aren't they? Yeah, and they're already on their way down to the bot lane. Are they trying to just simply go for end? Yeah, now they can't anymore, I suppose, because Stukov is dead. That's your support gone, and that pretty much shuts down any ambition to end the game through the bottom of the map. So, nice one. Triple tap, baby. Skog with a big hit here. Where's Nova's damage? She's still top damage. Easy. Even ahead of Zeratul. 41,000. Yeah, get tapped. But now that we got the next camp being attacked, and with two heroes down, there's no chance for the Donuts to shut that down. It also means that we're going to see the top fort likely going to fall. And another Dragonite is coming up in just a little bit. So if that gets locked in by go next, they're definitely going to try to end the game. 
All right. I mean, they're memeing with the comp, obviously, but I guess at the end of the day that we're hoping that they can lock in the kill with it anyways. But go next. They just said, guys, this is a little bit too much disrespect. Don't get me wrong. We get it. There's a bit of a skill gap here, and you showed that in game number one, but you can't get away with all that crap here. That's just not happening. At least not now. So, yeah, they're trying to uh, create a little bit more space here. Half a level, and then they have level 20. Go next once the Dragonite. They go for the Pogga, but he gets out. All of them just retreat instantly. Top lane has been retaken. Misha has been there. And that camp is going to take now the objective. Uh, sorry, the, the, the Ford. Zero. Yeah, they can't get the kill there either. But it's all about level 20. This is the only reason why Go next is slowing this down a bit. Because they want to get the Storm Talons first. And they still have more than a level lead, so why wouldn't they? They come the boars on the other hand. They're unleashing them already. I don't know if they have to engage here. If they can get the snipe, then uh, okay. But the lurking arm is a little bit too late. And now they should just buy themselves a little bit more time. They nearly got the level 20. No reason to lose the hero before that's the case. All right, there's the attack already. Wall is set up. They caught Valera. And they go for the kill. Copenhagen escapes again. But Nova doesn't. Nova down, Ixia tries to get the kill against Blade, but Orga is already pogging it with a no control now that it got 20. And that's the Abyssa copy easily taken down. Is he going to be able to channel before Valera is on the point? Nah, it's not happening. Oh my god, really? I thought the Toxic Nest would take it down. Wit must have eliminated it. Alright, that should be game. 10 kills to 8. You got another 28 seconds until Nova is back and you got a Dragonite too. Yep, they're gonna go straight up for it. So that should be, I mean, it should be game. If they can get stopped, then that's a different story. I mean, you can see that they are just trying to get a kill. They're moving in from behind in an attempt to take them down. I like that they're taking the catapults. That's gonna help them a little bit. But the Dragonite still has a ton of HP and ooh boy. Nova is gonna be back. They might be able to pull this defense off. Maybe they can defend this, but it is not gonna be easy. Then again, the Dragonite is losing a lot of damage already. That's 50% H HP on that bad boy. Yeah, but Zaratul is dead. Yeah, now it's rough. But then again, uh, can they kill more? They try for Lauba, and he's dead. Lauba down, and the core is falling. Go next. They take the map, and the Donuts, they lose it. On Dragonshire, they memed a little bit too hard. Too much disrespect, and they got punished for it. Yep, they get punished for it, and that hurts them a little bit in the standings as we are heading into game number three. Okay, let's go. Game number three. <laughs> Yeah, the memes were a little bit too big. The disrespect that we saw on the last map, it was just a bit too much to handle here, apparently. So not even the Donuts can uh, win if they go for, like, Nova, Valera, and everything else. It's just a bit too much. So good job by Go Next to lock them down here. And I went over the standings a little bit when we were talking about the game, but just to give you guys a bit of an idea, currently the Donuts are at 30 points in the standing. Uh, sorry, it's 37. And number four, Team Soundless, they have 30. So there's a little bit of a gap between the two teams already. I think at this point, the Donuts are very well aware that most likely towards the end of the regular season, they're going to take rank three. And that's what they're entering the playoffs with. And for them, that's honestly pretty good. You're going to be able to make it very likely then to the offline event. Everything is going to be fine there. So with that in mind, it doesn't seem like they're very eager to try for number two spot because it's a bit hard for them to catch up with 30k and with the hardos. Now, it's not impossible. We should still point that out. So uh, we'll see if they're going to full try hard now. But they have always been one of the teams that likes to meme around a little bit. Now, 30k did that the other day too, and they nearly lost the map because of it. They should have lost the map, but Inting for Ruby got apparently a bit too excited and nervous, and then completely ended, uh, which was unfortunate for them. Very lucky for 30k. But yeah. Lucio is the first pick, now that he hasn't been banned out. It's Infernal Shrines, and we got our support bans again with Utha and Stukov eliminated. Now, Hogger gets banned on Infernal Shrines. Shocking. But Sonia 
is still up for grabs and could be taken at any point now. So we'll see if they do that. Let's have a little bit of a look. Can they lock it in? Yes, no? I mean, she should be one of the picks here. And Tigers. Alright. Odin Boy is in again. Tigers for Odin. Sonia for the spin to win, the wave clear, and all of the on point damage that she's bringing to the table. And what exactly are we getting from uh, the donuts now? So far, it looks like they're going a little bit more try hard, but then again, it's Ruzzo who's currently on Lucio. So we'll see if they're going for something a bit more out of the box. They are the guys, these are the guys that played the triple support in Battlefield Eternity. But there's the birdie, and there's Diva. So that is more like it. More what, we, what you would expect here. So, yeah. Diva for space created on the shrine. Can get the explosion in, for example. What exactly are we going to get for the bans? We, Lauber's May has been banned. I mean, they banned it, actually. And Ixia hasn't taken anything yet. So could still swap it around. Lauber, of course, has played a lot of the new Burak, mostly in Battlefield of Eternity, but still another good map for him for the engage if you want to go for a quick kill here. I mean, we saw Tyrrell already earlier. Could see one again. We'll see. And here we go. Varian. Yeah, they don't want to go into any blow-up comps on the other side either. Okay, let's make it happen. Can go next. Like, uh, for go next, it would be insane. Can you imagine them winning a second map here and all of a sudden uh, pulling ahead in the best of five series and taking the lead? That would be bonkers. So they know that they were given a gift on the last map. And this time, they would love to take the lead and all of a sudden put the match point onto the donuts. So there we got Jojo for the added wave clear, and on top of that we got Malfurion as well. Okay. What is Lava gonna play at the front now? Is a Nubarak is back? Stitches! I'm not quite sure if he realized that the patch isn't live yet. This is not on the newest patch. And Ixia's Probius! Yeah, that's not a meme, by the way. Ixia actually played quite a bit of Probius. That is not a meme, ladies and gentlemen. So, is that gonna work or not? Uh, time will tell. But yeah, this is not the new patch yet. This thing is still on the PTR, still on the test server. So, we got Kelvin coming in with the last pick here against all of this. If they can put pressure onto Probius, that would be kind of neat for them. Can they pull that off, though? It would be crazy if they take the lead. There's Zeratul. They're going to try to farm the probe. All right, let's go. Game number three, everybody. Let's make it happen. The third map in the best of five series between Go Next and the Donuts. Go Next against the Donuts, and we got the probe in play. Okay, Probius is in on the left side. We got Kelvin on Tychus, Wit on Johanna, Zero on Zeratul, Skynox is playing Malfurion, and we got Blade on Sonya. And Lauber playing Stitches, unfortunately not with the Alexstrasza support, so they don't uh, are not in a position where they can farm the level 1 globe talent, which we've seen once, and it was kind of crazy. Nobody could kill Stitches. Copenhagen on Diva, Ruzzo on Lucio, Ixir coming straight in with the Warp Resonance on the level 1, playing his Probius again. And we got Skog on Falstad. Yeah, Probius is something that Ixir really likes to play, and the first time that I saw it, I was like, what the hell is that shit? But he is solid on Probius. Probably one of the best Probius. I mean, it's not like we have a lot of Probius players, to be honest. But as far as Probius players go, he's pretty good. So, yeah. Stitches, apparently. Lauba is trying to get a bit of a test setup for the new patch. Stitches is going to be changed quite a bit. But one of the things that's going to happen is that he is getting his finishing hook at a baseline on level 13 with a new patch once that hits the live server. That's going to be interesting. And, well, there we got our level 1 talent. So this one, the good old Hungry for More, is going to be kind of cool. You can end up with a massive, massive hit point pool on Stitches. And it's awesome if you're playing Alex Straza together with him. Because if she goes for her level 1, stacks it properly, then she can, genera regener uh, she can generate globes for Stitches. And it is incredible the hit point pool that he ends up with. I mean, even Tigers, with the bigger they are, he is at some point just still capitulating and saying, like, guys, this isn't working. This is just not working here. It's also not really the Stitches setup that you normally want to go for, because with the hook, you kind of look for a stun after it. 
What they are, of course, attempting to do, what we're likely going to see is a false dead with the Gust after Stitches comes in with Gorge. So that's one of the old school isolation plays that we've seen in the first season of HTC even. <clears throat> I think back in 2017. Uh, yeah, so you pretty much just like go in at the level 10, you try to get a hook, get a gorge in. Once you do false dead gusts everybody else away, you isolate the target, the gorge target, and then you try to take it down. But normally you're trying to get a stun together with it. In this case, Lucio is most likely going to attempt to boop the target back in. But, well, for now Lucio gets shut down quickly. So it's not really a bad setup, it's something that we've seen a whole lot. But yeah, Lauber obviously is going to try to get that globe over here. Well, at this point he actually doesn't. Needs to be careful. If you go for Hungry for more, you also get eventually a uh, movement speed advantage. Yeah, Globe gets stolen away from him. Yeah, nicely done. I like it. This is the small place, those little nuances that we're seeing from Gonex and other teams now. They're just trying to deny Lauber as many Globes as they can. And it's not anything crazy just yet. But yep, there's another one. Snacks this up too. Lauba is still sitting at two Globes. Guys, this might sound a little bit ridiculous or look a little bit ridiculous, but if you can easily take some of the globes that Stitches wants, that is important. We've seen Stitches in the late game on maps like Tomb of the Spider Queen, for example, that easily ended up with 13,000 hit points or more. And it's fucking insane. Especially coupled with Devour, you can not kill that guy. It's nearly impossible. So if they can prevent Lauber from getting all of these globes, that's fantastic for the late game. You do that over a 20 minute game, for example, and that will have a significant effect. Right now, they denied him three globes at least, and that is easy 100 hit points that he's not gonna have in the late game. You do that over the course of the entire game, and you're looking at denying him potentially a thousand or even more. So yeah, as long as they can do that, awesome for them. It's a small thing uh, again. But here we go. There's already D.Va, putting them into a bit of a corner, creating some space. 18 versus 17 stacks on all of this. Teams are looking for the level 7, but Stitches is down. That's the kill. They didn't go for the bigger they are, by the way. Instead, we have them currently within the rhythm, so trying to extend the duration even further, playing around that. But this is a good look for Go Next. They're coming in. They're trying to easily take the first one here, now that they established the lead. And Urutsu is in trouble. Uh, scratch it, he's dead. Yeah, he's dead. That's another kill against Lucio. And that's three kills to zero. And that is next with a Punisher. So, yeah. Guys, all memes aside, if the Donuts lose this series, or even if they lose two maps, Team Soundless is going to look at that and think, hey, maybe we can pull something off after all. There's not a lot of matches left in the regular season. That's definitely true. Only two are remaining. But if Lauber and his boys get shut down by another team, shut down hard, maybe lose this one, that could backfire. So they got to be a bit careful. If you have a league, at the end of the season, there's always situations where a match doesn't really matter as much as others. And then teams are oftentimes memeing a little bit. <laughs> nice. But I'm not sure if they are... They need to be a bit careful with this. But as I said, level 10 is going to be the game changer. Level 10 with Gorge, Gust... That's going to be the setup for them. Ixia is going to try to hold the side lane. But of course, the pick into Zeratul has definitely made his life a little bit more dangerous. So there's that. And well, there we go. Half a level until level 10. 3 to 0. Already got the little lead over here. We got the Tenderizer on level 7. The playtime is in. Right now, Lauba has 7 stacks. Puts him at 210 extra hit points. And Skynox gets it hard by that hook. But he's still able to make it out. No way. There's the leap now. Falling sword. Yeah, alles gute kommt von oben, baby. All right. Here we have it. Starting to jump in with another good route against Lauba. But not enough follow-up damage. The hook as a counter. Did not connect either, though. But yeah, 8 stacks for Lauber so far. Hasn't even gotten 5% movement speed advantage. It's going to kick in at 15. But here's the Gorge. And then we're going to see the Gust. And that's the moment when you're going to try and set the combo up. Now, for that, Falsa has to, of course, be there. Right now, he isn't. Still holding the side lane. But they could maybe even get a hook and then escort somebody over here behind the gate. That in and of itself would, of course, be nice. Wit doesn't even have to go for the iron skin here. Sees that hook coming from a mile away and has no problem at all. All right, a little bit of a play for the birdie. Nice leap and false. That is dead. 
false that is down. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the fourth kill in favor of Gonex. We haven't seen a single one for the donuts yet. Not one. Four kills to zero. Ten stacks by now for Lauber. Another 300 hit points for him. Yeah, but they should be a little bit worried about this because, honestly, a talent adventure on the next objective are likely going to lock another Punisher into the blue team's hands. So, yeah. Rutu is just like sliding around everywhere and trying to piss them off as much as he can. Gets scouting information for the team, is interrupting them, slowing them down a bit too. So all of this of course matters. But now we're seeing both of them going straight up for uh, the camps. Top left, top right. Gust is still up, Gorge is up. So they're gonna try and set this up properly, but the next objective fight is gonna tell us a lot. A couple of pylons are already in play. Yeah, and Lauber is trying to take the position early with his team. With Copenhagen on D.Va, they should always be able to take position eventually, just simply because the explosion is so good at zoning the opponent out that you can retake that easily. Yeah, the hook gets dodged. Nicely done. Good good blink from Zeratul. 21,000 damage on Tigers. Falstad and Sonya are both still at the top, and Tigers is moving in topside. Yeah, that's a problem. That's a gust, and Skog is in trouble and might have to get out of this one. Yeah, he's flying out. He's flying out before Sonya can come in. Lipos and cooldowns, so nothing to do there. Mortar Punisher therefore was taken over. And that's actually a bit annoying for the blue team. They were trying to get the kill instead, but they couldn't. Now the Mortar Punisher is going to do work at the bottom of the map. Level 13 talents make it a bit easier for go next. To have a good position here and defend this, but some damage is still going to be done. The wall at least is completely taken down now. Lauba with a gorge gets body blocked and the root, and that's a kill. Stitches is down. All he wanted was some playtime, and all he finds is death. Kelvin, by the way, talking about death, survives. Yeah, cheated death. Needs to be careful that he's not the one pro uh, proccing the Punisher stun. Well, that could have been the end of him, anyways. But Ixia is low and gets out. But the pressure is on. Now, the birdie has in the meantime just taking two macro plays. Falstead is up at the top, is trying to get the most out of his pick on level 7. Every single time that you're going for secret weapon, you always want to be on that side lane because this is like the ideal scenario. It's like textbook. This is where you get the most out of the auto attack damage because structures, well, they can't move. So there's that. He nearly takes the four down, but it's still five kills to zero. We're waiting for the first one to come through for the donuts. They haven't made the isolation play yet either. A lot of that had to do with the talent advantage or the experience lead for the other team. Gust is also always being used here against Zeratul to save Falstad. So it's a real defensive tool for him. Blade, no leap, no leap, no leap, maybe. <laughs> yeah, he had six seconds on the leap. And he gets away, but boy, that chicken is coming home to roost eventually. So, five kills to zero, half a level lead, good moves here by, a bird, by the birdie to stay alive, but it is still, it's pretty rough. I mean, uh, yeah, he has to be super careful. This is not really the game that they envisioned, I suppose. That last pick into Zeratul definitely ruined Falstaff's day. But Zero, talk about Zeratul, finds himself isolated and gets murdered. Oh, the nice attempt for another hook. Lauba honestly has an abysmal hook hit rate. Yeah, he's not hitting anything with that thing. Has he hit a hook? I think like one or two against Malfurion, right? But outside of that, they were not lucky on it. Now he obviously went for the fishing hook. In the next patch, that thing is going to be baseline on level 13. But, yep. Can he maybe lock one in? Nah, great reaction. That was actually sick from Jojo. That was really good from Wit, because he did not know that was coming. That was a good reaction time by him. I don't think he had any idea where Stitches was exactly, and uh, that hook was very... He saw that one very, very late. It's a good job dodging out on that, using the iron skin here. And, well, let's see. What can they do here? They're already starting to move down to the bottom of the, of the mid lane again. And now the level 16s are in with the last raid. Yeah, and of course, we're also looking here at the Master Warblade again. Saratul is going to go for the birdie whenever he has a chance. And this is the next objective. That's the third one. So now we're going to see the party start for real. 
both teams have lost a fort at the top lane. Pretty much in structures, they're fairly even, with the exception of the bottom fort that has now been taken. So the red team is a little bit ahead on that, but they're still behind in kills. Not that kills matter all that much at this point. I mean, again, they matter obviously. The longer the game lasts, the more kills matter because the death timers are increasing. But in the sense that with kills, you either want to establish map control or you want to establish an experience. So the past kills don't matter to the extent that experience has nearly been bridged by the donuts. That's probably explaining it the best way. But yeah, the objective matters a whole lot because now we're 12 minutes in and those bad boys are starting to hurt a little bit. The hook again! Always being dodged out. Wit is just not getting hit by that thing. Either he dodges and just jukes it or he goes for the iron skin. There's the gas towards the top. And yeah, these setups just don't work the way that they want to. They create space though and that allows them to take the lead on the objective. So at least that's the silver lining here. But these attempts at plays to isolate a target and then take it down are just not successful. They have a single kill in the entire game and in the long run that's likely not going to be enough. Blake gets attacked though, that could have been another one. Kelvin is also low. 37, red team locks in another objective. So good job on that. Lauba maybe with another opportunity to get the hook and this time he gets Malfurion. There it is. That's Malf taken. They're trying to go for the kill here. The Punisher jumps in a little bit too late, but they got the kill. Diva is down. Zeratul took a, a part at the top lane, and now we can pressure this a little bit more. But the real action is happening in the middle right now as they're going for the easy attacks here. Yeah, nicely done. Kills on both sides. Now, of course, the Punisher still with the action. is doing his thing. And, well, so far, so good. Up uh, this, zero is in play in the middle of the map. Yep, they're taking this one down. One fort has been destroyed. Ixia is at the bottom of the map, still being busy. And at the top, they of course had to defend for this one too. All right. So let's have a bit of a look. 35,000 damage for Lucio, top damage on the red team. In the game, it's Tychus with a 39,000. Look at the uh, the wave clear for Luce, uh, for uh, for Ixia's um, Probius, 123,000. <laughs> to be fair, Sonya's close, but yeah, kind of crazy still. Anyways, now with that, they're trying to go for Lucio again, but Ruzzo is able to make it out. Uh, no problem for him. Alrighty, so by now all of the forts for the blue team have been annihilated. The red team is ahead on structures, they're way behind in kills, but it doesn't matter too much because they are still on even experience. Another unstoppable with the iron skin is saving Johanna. Good for her. Same time, the next objective is going to spawn at the top side. That's where we're going to have the next battle. They're already trying to chase them down here. And now, oh, the leap miss! Nah, that's unfortunate. Talking about missing things, Lauba... Not locking that hook in. When he got the one against Malfurion, they were able to more or less get an insta-kill. So that was kind of neat. But now he's playing around the cooldown a lot in the attempt to finally lock another target in. Gorge is back up, so that's that. They also, by the way, on top of that, have now the level 20 talent coming up very, very soon. But, yeah, let's go. <laughs> a little bit of a blind took setup that didn't work. Was trying to get them straight into the Provius damage. Lauber's at 30 stacks. 30 stacks give him 10% extra movement speed and roughly a thousand extra hit points. Considering that we're 15 minutes into the game, I still gotta say that I like that go next denied him globes, especially in the early game. So that's a pretty solid setup here. Uh, still, thousand extra hit points go a long way. He went, by the way, into the hungry, hungry stitches. Okay, the big bad hippo is back again. Both of the teams now with the level 20, and that gives us the cooldown reduction for Jojo on a falling sword. In addition to that, we get the shadow stride, and of course the big red button, and here we go. Cooldown reduction incoming, back down to 10 seconds, the leap, and Lauba is down. Stitches is dead, and here we go. Same time, shoot him up, and he's already trying. Yeah. Ixia is trying with his Probius to get as much damage out as he can using his level 20. The bird, yeah, still a little bit lost here. Yeah, they try to get the damage in. He still has Gust up, so if the shit hits the fan, he can always use that to get them out of it. But now the objective is popping up in another 10 seconds, and Stitches is down for another 34, so that means that Skog is moving to the bottom of the map in an attempt to push the lane out. And this is a big chance for Gonex to make some plays here. 
Now, Lucio is helping out because Zeratul is there. They know that. He gets pinged already. And Zero didn't know that there was a Lucio waiting in the wings, so he gets killed. That was pretty cool. So, Zeratul had no idea that Lucio was there. Lucio obviously saw him, so he pings it, and then they come in and get the kill. That was a bit unfortunate for Zeratul, but at the same time, it was also thanks to the setup of Lucio in the first place. And now the red team has pressure at the bottom of the map with Falstead, can global towards the top, and the blue team, after they realize that Falstead is just going to push, they went for the objective and said, guys, we need that motor punisher. We can't just simply react to them the entire time. But now that the bird is coming back up, it's a five versus four, and that could be a problem. Gust into the corner, big one. There's the explosion, and it hits hard. Explosion hits, they're still trying to get the kills. And Skork, Malfurin is the first one to fall. And Falstead is dead as well. So is Stitches. Lauber, he came back, he saw, and he died again. And they're getting uh, Tychus too. Yeah, that leaves only Jojo. And she's getting chased down right now by Lucio. But they still have to defend against this one a bit as well. So yeah, big fight at the top. I mean, the explosion, the gust, Falstead getting killed shortly after. Stitches dies. A lot of heroes went down in that encounter. But the Punisher can still push the bot lane, the top lane at least a little bit. Shouldn't really be able to do too much here. But I guess at the end of the day, he's going to damage the keep a bit. Yeah, but there's no way that he actually takes it. <laughs> Zero and Rutso are fighting a one versus one. And I think that Lucio is winning. <laughs> Lucio is just pissing him off big time. But Zero isn't giving up. I'm not sure if he maybe should. Uh, well, no, 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 he's likely dead. Yeah, there it is. Okay, cooldown reduction again for Jojo, and they got the kill. Yep, overstaying your bounds just a little bit. So uh, Lucio thought that would be easier than it actually was. So that's a kill against the support. And he's down for 50 seconds. Overdoing a bit. I mean, needling them the entire time really works, of course. His damage output is at 66,000. He's top damage in the game right now. But it also results in a situation like this one, where he just tries to play this one versus one. Uh, Jojo comes in too. And all of a sudden, it's a dead uh, Zeratua, sorry, a dead Lucio they were talking about. And a five-man setup on the map for go next, whereas the red team doesn't have their support player. So here they go for Lauba again. Hungry, hungry stitches. Hits two. And tries to get them straight into the damage of Probius. But I don't think that's enough. And this is still a five versus four. And the fort is about to go down. Blade has to retreat. And it seems like Diva is also having some trouble. Tigers is the first one to fall. So at least they got the kill, but they lost the fort. But of course, now it's a four versus four again. Damn, this game is all over the place. Oh, the leap! Oh my god, the insta blow up against Falstead. Nice! Really, really sweet leap here by Blade. That was a fantastic leap. Check that shit out again. Look at it. They get baited out a bit. And then all of a sudden, Blade sitting there at the side, leaps in, and they blow the bird up within a second. It's li really kill for a kill. I have no idea why Lauba moved this far out right now. I don't really think that was necessary. But yeah, Lauba is down as well. Guys, it's 12 kills to 7. All of a sudden, it's turning into a full fiesta here. No keep has fallen yet, but the top one is incredibly low. We got a 4 versus 3 now on the map, and the red team should really cut their losses at some point and move away from this. 34 stacks for Stitches. Camp at the bottom of the map gets taken now. And yep, Jojo is also jumping in. Gets the cooldown reduction here. They want to take the camp. And they should be able to get it. And indeed they do. But it gets nearly blown up within a second because of Ixia's uh, Probius. Probius is honestly insane at this point when it comes to the, uh, the wave clear. Oh, oh, oh! Big kill. Attempt. Not quite successful. Yeah. Where's Probius actually at? Look at Probius, 66,000 damage. Honestly, he is starting to sneak into the number one spot. And check out his siege damage, 185,000. 185k. Now the objective this time is spawning in the mid lane and they are making plays for the siege giant camps again. Uh, the bruiser camps, sorry. <laughs> yep. But Probius, if, honestly, if these setups continue for Ixia, he's going to overtake Lucio in top damage in the game. He's way... Like, he is ahead of Tychus, more or less. By seven damage points. But if that continues... Yep. Yeah, here comes the big red button. All right. Let's go. 
Let's see who takes this one. We're 21 minutes into the game. The he, Punisher, they hurt. They try to go for Lauber. Uh, careful, his hit point pool is significant. And Wit, they have to activate the ult on Malfurion to keep Wit alive here. Big red button even to zone them out a little bit further. They're still... What was that gust? Ah, okay. Isolating Zaratul, at least trying to do the big leap again. But it's not enough to save Zaratul. But Lauber, 14 points, what? Lauber, he dies to Jojo. Rest of the team is on the run. Tigers, he's low. Is he going to make it out? They go for Lucio. They get the kill. Kelvin with the dash. But Skog is going to chase him, isn't he? Oh, <laughs> Birdie, careful. No, bye-bye, Birdie. <laughs> oh, my God. What a setup again. What is happening in this game? Three heroes down on the side of the donuts. They take the Punisher, but of course they can't do anything with it. It was just simply a matter of can you deny it to your opponent or not. And yeah, that's what happened. Now they have to defend the top lane, but the Catapults are pushing in. Catapults this late in the game are, of course, just chunking down structures within seconds. But it is ridiculous at this point. Absolutely ridiculous. Lucio is just crushing it, but at the same time, they're chasing him whenever they can. And they did a fantastic job here. Baiting the jump in front of the wall. Nah. Fair enough. Prevents the keep from taking damage, I suppose, but it opens the wall up. But what a game. Like, seriously, what a game. 23 minutes in. It's been a while. This is going to be a long game for Dragonshire. We are on level 24. Uh oh. Uh oh. Careful. Careful. Probius gets caught and flattened like a pancake, but Zeratul was trapped too, so both of them are dead. Yeah. And the chase is on again. I, I mean, seriously, it's just blow for blow for blow. They just want to get kills. And there's the monster hook. There it is. And that's the kill. Malfurion is down, and that might just be the kill that takes it for them. Another big leap. Another big leap. Rutsu, he gets away. He gets away. But at least they're saving Kelvin too. So at least there's that. But boy, like... <laughs> the hook, the leap, just everything. They're turning it against Lucio once again, but they just can't get the kill and They need to be so careful. Lauba is looking for that hook, but he is missing it again. With only three heroes on the map, this is the chance for the Donuts to at least take the keep. And they are going for it. The keep is going to go down. Can they get more? That's the big question. Do they have a chance to do a little bit more here? Here comes Wit once again. And rushes out. Had the iron skin still up. But they have Zaratul back to business. So now they need to be careful here. Oh, yeah. That nibbled a little bit in Zaratul's face mask. I mean, dude, didn't you hear? You don't have to mask up anymore. You're outside. What are you doing? Jesus. Uh, anyways, so now we got the next camp attack. 16 to 10. They can count. 41 stacks for stitches. That's 1,200 hit points that he has. Another 4, and he has a bit of a movement speed advantage on top of that, too. Gets another 5%. Yeah! Zeratul! And he immediately moves out. The leap did not hit anything. That leap didn't do anything. And now the Ghast isolates Blade. Blade is dead. Blade is down. And there it is. The hungry, hungry stitches. They're setting it up against Kelvin. And they didn't take him down. Tigers was so low, but they couldn't get the kill. Falstead with a little bit of a nice fly move, but that's a kill this time. No, it still isn't. Wit moves out, jumps out of the fight. Level 25 on the board, but it seems that this time another keep falls. Every time they lose a hero, the donuts are there to capitalize on it. And now they're taking the second keep in the game. And as I pointed out a bit earlier, these catapults, they are starting to hurt, and they're hurting a lot. We are 26 minutes into the game, and look at this. Objective at the top, no keep in the middle, no keep at the bottom. What do we have here? There's still a fort in the mid lane, which means every single catapult has now a catap- uh, has, uh, Sorry, every single minion wave has a catapult for the red team, and there is no catapult counter pressure for go next coming from the mid lane. So mid and bot lane are going to be a disaster. And the bird? 
I kind of expected him to go to the bot lane and try to push us out a bit more, but I don't think they want to risk losing him to fall uh, to Zeratul, as long as they don't know where he is. But I can guarantee you that Go Next needs to go for an aggressive play now, or they're going to lose this. I mean, check this out. Camp plus catapult. Camp plus catapult. If they don't end this right now, that fight, if they don't force it, they're going to lose the game to catapults. 100%. So they gotta be aggressive, and that's what they're trying. They leave in the back, they try to go for Rutsu, they can't take him. And here comes the Hungry Hungry Stitches again. Odin is up, False that moved into the mid lane. The ending middle, the ending middle. False that is on the core, the core is falling, Wit is down. That's the nail in the coffin right there. Doesn't matter if Lauba lives or dies, he goes down. But so will the core. Catapults do so much damage here. There's the gust. It allows the minions to come in. And that is win number two for the donuts. They take it. 27 and a half minutes on Infernal Shrines. And the red team is victorious. Okay, all direct pass. Game number four coming up. The Donuts against Go Next. And the last map, whew, uh, the Donuts had to work for it. The late game, gotta admit that there were a couple of few more, like a lot of moments where I thought, all right, this is gonna, this is gonna actually uh, turn against them. And towards the late game, I really felt that just one good team fight and Go Next takes it. So, that's that. Anyways, we got Lucio and Uther being uh, banned out here. Uh, but yeah, let's have a little bit of a look of what exactly... Especially the Donuts are gonna do now. It feels like every single game that we've seen so far outside of game number one, the Donuts came in and they said, okay, we meme a little bit in game three, and we meme a lot in game number two. And that was a bit crazy, so... Yeah, but we'll check that out. The bird gets banned this time. And we'll see. By the way, while we're talking about all of this, one topic, uh, we always seem to be ending up, uh, we always seem to be ending up talking about food on the channel. And I have to just repeat this, self, all, uh, this for the people that are also on uh, watching this on YouTube. Because for some reason, always the, po the topic turns to food and then it turns to American food and all of a sudden we're talking about Mexican food. And I can't be the only one that just thinks that Mexican food is insanely overrated. I just said it a second ago, but I say it again. I like it. I like it. I enjoyed eating it, and I had also good Mexican food, but... Oh my god, Gaslow. Oh. But at the same time, I just feel like the hype that especially exists in California on Mexican food is just completely blown out of proportion. Even Spain, with paella and everything that they have here, they worship that stuff. And at the end of the day, most of those things, not all of them obviously, are rice dishes. And while they are great, and I like them, it's not really the best food on the entire planet. And the way that some people talk about Mexican food and even about paella here, you could think that's the case. I feel like there's way better food than that. Doesn't make that bad, and I still enjoy when I have it, but there seems like this, I don't know, I can't be the only one that seems, seems like that, feels like that is a little bit blown out of proportion how some people seem to worship that. Anyways, now that we got Gazlo in, um, I mean, we're on all direct pass, <laughs> I still can't see it. It's not like we have five camps on the map or something. But anyways. Um, we got, again, massive support bans. We got Mediv banned out, Lucio, Stukov, Uther. <laughs> Brightwing is already taken, so they got a global here. But it just amazes me that the donuts are going for an early Gaslow pick. If you want to pick Gaslow, why not late? You know, why not a late pick in the Gaslow? <laughs> well, because the other picks are even more crazy. No, there's Tacita. Okay. I, I I can't watch. Ragnaros. Okay. All right. All right. They're gonna play lava wave, aren't they? <laughs> Someone call Trixler. It's gonna be a lava wave game. You know it's gonna happen. Unless they want to go massive gravel bomb into Sulfuras, but I just don't see it. The way these guys have been playing, this is going to be a lava wave game. You know it, I know it. So, yeah. Anna and Junkrat. Alright, they got Anna, Junkrat, they got Cassia, Hogger. 
what's Rutsu gonna play? Sometimes I, I, I just can't watch. I just can't watch. The donuts, I have no, like, apparently the donuts, you have donuts with alcohol now. That's what's going on here. But, yeah. <laughs> Last pick. All right, all right, Tracer. Okay, so they're playing Tracer. They're at least putting something in their hands that can, like a scalpel, uh, move through the opponent's backline and try to get a couple of kills in against heroes like Junkrat and Anna. All right, game number four, all direct pass. Let's see what the donuts can do with this one. Is the gas lot successful or not? We're gonna find out. I have no idea what to put on the thumbnail, by the way. There's so many weird heroes that got played today. It's gonna be crazy. Game on! We got our fourth map coming up, and guys, go next against the Donuts. A 2-1 lead for the boys in red. The Donuts, again, a little bit out there. Every single time they're heading in the series, they get a bit cocky, aren't they? So, Blade on Hogger. We got Zero on Cassia. Kelvin on Junkred. Wit is playing May, And we got Skynox on Anna. On the right side of the map, we got Skok on Tassada, Kopmagen on Ragnaros, Laubo on Gaslo, Ixi on Brightwing, and Rutsu on Tracer. So yeah, I have my eyes on Ragnaros. We have seen Ragnaros quite a lot during the season, and not a single time have we seen Lava Wave being picked. Now, normally I don't really think that Lava Wave is a great pick. We had a couple of compositions where I said, well, you could try and pull something off with it. And the main reason why I always have a bit of an eye out for Lava Wave is because Tim was just so obsessed with it in the days of HTC. But when I look at the map and the size of the map and the lineup that they're playing here, this is probably the best chance for us to see a Lava Wave pick in general, because what else do they have to prep for Ragnaros' Sulfuras? I mean, pretty much what they own is if they go into the Gravel Bomb on Gaslow on level 10 and then try to play around that. So there's a chance that that happens, but we'll see if that's the case. That being said, Rutsu's Tracer is kind of mean, so that's something that they could potentially play. And of course, on the other side, we also have Kelvin, who can make a huge impression in the game with Junkrat and the potential isolation place that he's been looking for. But either way, we'll see what they can pull off with this. And we're at the end, good to go. So whatever issue they had, apparently there were a couple of problems earlier with the Discord voice channel and all the stuff. So I don't really know if they're currently using the Battle.net voice options. Usually the teams are all set up in Discord, but some server issues made it a bit difficult earlier today. Gazlo, talking about him. We got him on the rocket boots. Okay, and at the top side, Copenhagen. Yeah, he's going up against Cassia. Now, the map is normally a little bit slow when it comes to objectives. Teams don't really go for it right away. I mean, it's another good example, I think, of where Blizzard could maybe make some adjustments. And, well, as we're seeing Cassia die, this is also giving me the perfect opportunity to rant a little bit about the last patch because I always feel that people take what I say a little bit out of context. Now, the next patch, as some of you might know, is featuring a lot of things that nobody asked for, as usual with Blizzard, because they always know better than uh, their player base what the players really want. And the one thing that pisses me off is not really that they're investing time into the lone talents. I don't mind that too much. If they want to experiment with something new, I'm totally on board with that. I hate what they're doing or trying to do with those experience globes. I think that's absolute horse shit. But lone talents and other stuff, I don't really mind. What really annoys me the most with what they're doing with patches is that there are so many other things that players and the community has been asked for for ages, and they should at least address a few of those things first. I mean, Fawcett has been bucked out of its his mind for like three months and they didn't give a shit. There's other, there's other problems with bugs that we also have in the game that they don't address at all. And we have so many maps in the pool that could be balanced a little bit better. <laughs> Volskaya, anybody? <laughs> but they could really just get a little bit of their development time in with the two developers that they have left in their skeleton crew to do that first and then come in with new stuff like Lone Talents. That's pretty much the only real criticism here. The idea itself, I don't really mind. Try it out, give it a shot, all good with me, but at least go and remove some of the major bugs first. Maybe end Christmas in the Nexus in fucking May and stuff like that before you do the other stuff. Outside of that, totally fine with me. That was a nice, that's, that was a really nice setup with a fence. Wait, he might die because of that. Anna! Nah, the trade kicked back in. 
But Wid was in real trouble here, and that was all thanks to Tassada and the nice setup that he had. Rutsu, on the other hand, uh, he also ate quite a bit of dirt in that last encounter. But still, a sexy setup from Tassada, using the electric fence there right away. Slow them, isolate them, and that was nearly a kill. Now, we still got our level 4 talents in. Objective is, of course, popping up. We got level 7 talents up next. Normally around level 7 talents, sometimes even level 10. That's when the teams go for the prisoner camp for the first time. And, well, let's see what we're going to have. On level 1, by the way, no stacking for Cassia this time. Charge strikes are in. Up to the top side, Copenhagen is doing a fairly good job against Wit right now and pushing this out. But, yep, down here. <laughs> it's always Tracer. She was banned in one of the earlier matches, and I honestly like that we have Rutsu on Tracer now. Rutsu is just a great player. He has a lot of heroes where he excels. Now, obviously, it would be even better for him if he had some Alfurian support and could go deeper, but that's a completely different lineup that you're playing then, with a different idea behind it as well. But he can still have a huge impact here. We saw last time him needling the opposition with Lucio, and this time he simply switched Lucio out for Tracer. A similar idea behind it. Lauba with the cheeky spray right there. But Rutsu is pretty much doing the same thing that he did on the last map. This time he doesn't have Lucio, this time he has Tracer, but it's still a very mobile hero that is just trying to piss the opponent off six days to Sunday and get some extra damage in and maybe even connect a kill against someone like Kelvin on his Junkrat. But yeah, talking about Junkrat, there it is! There's the kill! Just talked about it. Yeah, in the meantime, also talking a little bit of our boy here. He went into the Hyper Focus Coils and then Master Blaster. Master Blaster for Lauber, and he's already happily blasting away at bot lane as he's trying to open the wall up. Now May is rotating down to deal with him. Two kills to zero. And of course, in an ideal world, the Donuts would like to end the series with a 3-2-1 victory and uh, take it home here on Aldrich Pass. I'm still eager to see what happens on level 10. Is, Trick is Trixler's wet dream finally coming true and we are seeing a lava wave or is it still going to be the standard talent that we see pretty much in every single game? This will for us smash. They honestly should bring in a green, a green Ragnaros tint so you can go for Hulk smash on level 10. That would be kind of awesome. Just give him a green tint. So many good ideas over here. As the Rutsu is barely surviving. Well, maybe not. Oh, 28 points! <laughs> Grenades everywhere! <laughs> and he goes down. <laughs> at some point, Junkrat had enough. And at some point, it was just enough. And Ixir with a nice polybomb straight up against him before he was able to get out. Okay, well, there it is, the gravel bomb. And now Sulfuras makes, of course, a lot of sense again. If they go for a nice gravel bomb setup and then have a Sulfuras behind it, they can do a lot of work here. Are they going to do it? Yes or no? That's the question. Ooh, even going to the black hole. And it's Lava Wave! <laughs> Someone called Trick Slides. Finally happening. The Lava Wave is in as Lava misses the black hole. And he dies for it. I the gravel bomb. Brightwing is also dead. Lava Wave at the top. Nicely timed. Just as the camp spawns. And that, by the way, is something that if you're ever playing Ragnaros and you're also playing with Lava Wave, you really, really need to learn the spawn timings on those maps so that you can use the, the Lava Wave at the perfect moment so that you can get the maximum amount of waves. There's nothing more annoying than when you're seeing a Lava Wave in an amateur scene match, for example, a Ragnaros that plays Lava Wave and he uses Lava Wave at the worst moment in time and gets only a single wave with it. They a single minion wave with it. So yeah, there's nothing more annoying. So learn the timings and you can have a look at how he's doing it here. That was just perfectly done by Copenhagen on the last one. The rocket ride is in too. Yeah, and uh, oh my god, poor Cassia. Yeah, she just got dumpstered. She just got absolutely dumpstered. Fully swarmed here. Uh, Lauber, on the other hand, is also a little bit low, but Brightwing can at least help out with that. So there's that, making a play down here again into the mid lane this time. And then attempt to take that camp down. This is one of the things that I've been preaching over and over and over again, that teams should always take the camp as quickly as they can. And the blue team does exactly that. The red team is delaying theirs slightly, so uh, yep, they haven't taken this off cooldown. Top sides, Ragnaros still playing this out. There's another couple of seconds until Lava Wave is hitting again. But, uh, yep, they can push the top in a little bit, and that resulted also in this taking some serious damage. So, there's that. Anyways, 
Bottom of the map. Bright wing dodging out on the Valkyrie. Nice. And yeah, also, Kelvin wasn't able to boop him back. So Ixia is alive. There's the lava wave again, roughly at the 40 second mark, a little bit earlier. And as you can see, this wave is going to be hit and we're likely going to have another one coming up in just a moment. So, double checking that. Is he missing it? Nah, there it is. Yeah, there it is. Boom. Gets two of the minion waves, exactly like you want to. I'm also talking about getting things. They nearly got a kill on Cassia, but it's not quite happening. On the level 13, we got the overcharged capacitators now. Doo -doo -doo -doo. And they go for the first objective here. Yeah, in the top lane, of course, now that the two minion waves have been eliminated, that gets pressured. That's eventually going to be pushed back. So it's a big map, and they do their best as they're going for the objective. The lava wave at the top is definitely going to shift the focus a little bit. There's the wave on the... Oh, grab a bomb. Gets a hit. Try to go for Blade. And he gets away. Nope, nope. Tracer locks him down. All right. Yeah, that could have been a bit nasty here. But they go for the objective again. Top side gets still pressured. So one of the towers is down. Second one is now falling. And in the meantime, they're coming in for the objective too. Okay. So four kills to three. 13 to 13. 22,000 damage for Tracer Rutsu. Racing them down. Yeah. And they're losing the fort at the bottom of the map even without the objective. So now that we're having the uh, raiders come in. They can try to not only take the top fort down, but maybe even already knock down a wall at the keep, given the situation here. Ragnaros is going to have his ult back up in 20 seconds, so he can he can enhance that push at the top side even further, or wherever they want to use it. Wit is insanely low, but he makes it out thanks to the assist from the rest of the team. Shankred is also jumping out here. But given how early we are... Oh, that was a beautiful one. Beautiful! Lauba, you are fucking kidding me! No way! How? Just how did he survive? Ixir, you are a god. You are a freaking god. Lava Wave at the top. Ragnaros with a play in the middle. Lava Wave takes it down and is gonna hit the next wave over here too. That top lane forward is toast because of the setup. That was beautifully timed. Very well done and unbefucking leaveable that Gaslow is still alive. We're gonna take another look at this, don't worry. But that is just crazy. Unbefucking leaveable. They nearly got the level 16 now. Yeah, and down here, they're making the play. Here comes Ragnaros with a molten core. The top keep, by the way, gets attacked. There's no minions. Top keep is gonna be in trouble if this continues. The wall is definitely going to fall with a little bit more time. And Ragnaros is already just blasting the bot lane apart at the top. Horga is now trying to deal with the situation. He needs to because there's way too much. I mean, this is a double, pretty much a triple setup. And with the level 16 talent, they could technically also stick around a little bit longer in an attempt to make something happen. But the combo attempt with Tassada and Gaslo did not work out the way that they wanted. Now Rutsu is getting forced back. The blue team still holding on to their keeps, at least for now, but they're way behind in structures. And because it was so sexy, check this defense out. Check it out, check it out. Have a look at Gaslo. As Gaslo gets attacked, there's the Valkyrie, a beautiful hit. And they just keep him alive. Time and time again. No chance, he makes it out. It's insane. It's absolutely insane. Could have sworn that would be a kill. I mean, I would have put money on it. Once the Valkyrie hit, I was like, yep, he's gone. He is definitely gone. And then, nope. Get saved. Crazy. Just crazy. Yeah, at the bottom of the map now, the blue team is just simply thinking, okay, guys, how do we turn this around? And one of the few ideas that they have is like, let's go for a boss. Let's try to take that. See what we can do with it. Tracer at the top. Rutsu. Okay, buddy. Down here, on the other hand. Yep, there we have it again. And Lava Wave at the top. Time and time again. Now, the top lane is going to be hit by that once again hard. Here comes the first minion wave that gets claimed by it, and here comes the second. That gives them a leading experience, and of course, they're also in a situation where they're now starting to heavily pressure the top keep, as most of the attention of the red team is focusing on the bottom of the map. Yeah, and Rutsu, he's still at it. He's still locked into his little one versus one here. Yeah, dashes away once again. Okay, Brightwing is now... Yeah, Brightwing is moving topside to hell out. You chicken! Rutsu, you chicken! Going for a two versus one, not respecting the one-on-one -on -one setup here. Yeah. Coward. <laughs> Double boss. 
Oh, the setup! Yes! <laughs> That's how you get a kill. That's how you get a kill. The wall into the uh, the uh, the rocket ride. Oh, Anna! The big snipe over here. They're going for Lauba. Lauba, bright wing, and there's the save. Top keep is gonna fall soon. Bottom keep has already fallen. They're getting crushed here. That's the end of Junkrat. Down here, they're trying to go for Lauba. He's unkillable. He's absolutely unkillable. Please kill him. <laughs> oh my god, please! Please! Just take him down! Unbefucking leavable. Oh, it is dead. Zero is on the run here. It's insane. It's absolutely insane. Yeah, Wit is also getting attacked, and now they go for core. But we're going to check out that beautiful setup here again. Have a look at that. Nice! That's how you get a kill. But of course, that doesn't matter anymore if you're just not able to get anything done around the structures. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is likely going to be the end of it. If not now, then just a bit later. Tracer is still doing a bit of damage down here. Nah. I guess for now they're still keeping it alive, but of course the objective is up. They nearly got level 20. It's 9 kills against 5. It's a good setup for them. It is a very, very good setup for them right now. Uh, yep. <laughs> Rutsu is... he's just not stopping, is he? And now we got our 20. And with the level 20 talents, the first thing that we have is the submerge. A little bit sad if you go with our wave, then go, go all the way, baby. But, yep, there's the miniature black hole. And together with a Kugel Blitz. And, well... Mali's just trying to farm again. <laughs> it's a trap! They're still trying to get that setup done with the tools. Yeah, love away for the top again. Putting it, pushing the core even further. And here we have it! And yeah, insta-kill against Hogga. Not quite the way that they wanted to set this one up, but again, Hogga is dead anyways. It's the results that matter. So yeah, nicely done. Lava Wave also hits the top minion wave here. And of course now every single lane gets pressure. It's the bot lane, the top lane, the mid lane. Wit is in trouble. He's about to go down. That's 11 kills against 5. The keep nearly destroyed. Two of the armor shields are already missing as the core gets attacked. And that's the third one eliminated. This is the end of the road in this match. Four go next. Our Heroes of the Storm battle between the two teams is definitely going to end with a victory for the Donuts. Ratnaros, he has the Molten Core already up. They go for the kill against Cassia. And the core is falling. Nicely done. A great performance, honestly, here by the Donuts. And guys, Lava Wave has a 100% win rate now. 100% win rate on the Lava Wave. The memes are alive. They're definitely alive here. 51,000 damage for Tracer. Good job. And that's a win. That's a W for the Donuts here on Aldrek Pass. Nicely done. GG. And well played. Thank you everybody for watching the video today. I hope that you enjoyed the show and the commentary. And keep in mind that the spoiler protection that is going to run for the rest of the video is made possible by all the support on Patreon.com. So guys, if you want to support my work, if you want to help me start new projects and keep the spoiler protection in place, please consider heading over to Patreon.com slash Kaldor. There's also a link in the YouTube description and check that out. Thanks in advance and see you guys next time with more esports coverage here on Color TV. Have a great day.